Up to this point, we've discussed urban legends that were just that, legends. Or at the very least, we discussed urban legends that could be real or fake, and there was no definitive answer. However, I thought it'd be fun to change that, at least for one video. So instead of our usual one, in this video we'll be discussing several urban legends, but this time with a twist. All of the following urban legends are in fact true. The Baby Monitor One summer night, newlywed couple Alex and Christine decided to put their baby to sleep early so they could host a little get-together with their friends. They assumed their infant would be fine. After all, they just had a new monitor installed. Anyway, they invited four people over. Jessica, Janeth, Oscar, and Hector. The six were having a fun night, catching up on old times, and remembering the good old days of their youth. Alex, Oscar, and Hector were all joking about, making remarks about the people they used to be, and how they've grown, while the women were chatting about politics, and Jessica and Janeth were telling Christine how happy they were for her, referring to her having a baby of course, and getting married. The night flew by, and one by one, all the guests began to leave. And with a sigh of relief, the newlyweds sat on the couch and drifted off to sleep. Their sleep wouldn't last long, because the moment a sound came from the monitor, Christine woke up. However, she didn't wake up to the sound of her baby crying, far from it. She couldn't exactly understand what she was listening to. As the noise coming from the monitor sounded somewhat distorted, she stepped in close to the monitor to try and distinguish what the sounds were, and as soon as she pressed her ear against the monitor, she heard a chilling voice say, You should check on the baby. Christine screamed and rushed to her infant's room, Alex following close behind. Their baby was fine, but from that point forward, the parents decided to change and always have someone looking over their precious bundle of joy. This legend is of course true. A story similar to this actually happened in Canada in 2015. A young couple were in another room tending to the house, when something similar to the legend actually happened. This family from Ontario heard creepy music coming from the baby monitor, and the moment they approached the monitor, they heard a voice tell them they were being watched. The family rushed to their child's room to secure his safety, and he was fine. However, from that point forward, the parents decided to change their ways and always keep an eye on their baby. The Organ Thief Daniel was going on a trip to Michoacan to go visit and meet his grandmother for the first time. Daniel always heard the amazing stories his mother would tell him about how great Mexico was and how amazing his grandmother was, and he always wanted to go. Sadly, his mom was an immigrant and actually couldn't visit in fear of deportation. So the moment Daniel was old enough and had enough money, he swore he would visit his grandmother, which for him was when he was 32. By that age, he was not only old enough to go, but he had the money due to his successful career as a businessman. He made his trip and everything was going fine. That was, until he got to his grandmother's home. Inside was not his grandmother, but a young, very attractive woman. He asked her where she was and she said that she was out shopping for some food. She then informed him that she was his grandmother's housekeeper and she added on that she thought he was cute, and his mother wouldn't be here for a couple hours if they wanted to do something. Not able to control her temptation, Daniel picked her up and they both went to the guest room, and I'm pretty sure you can infer what happened then. About an hour or two later, Daniel woke up to the sound of his phone ringing. It went straight to voicemail and it was his grandmother asking where he had been. His head was throbbing and he felt a sharp pain on his side, and then felt the burning sensation of the ice against his skin. He looked down and saw his crudely stitched up side. He reeled back in pain and turned his head to his left where he found a note on the wall that said to call an ambulance that he needs to go to the hospital. He did and on arrival the doctor told him one of his kidneys had been stolen. This legend is of course true. In fact, many cases of this very thing happen pretty much everywhere. The truth is, organ trafficking is very much real and accounts similar to the legend do in fact exist. There are many reports claiming that a woman seduced them into having sex, and then the next thing you know, they woke up in a bathtub, filled with ice, only to find out that one of their organs had been taken. However, I'd like to point out that not all the stories are the same. Some people were apparently kidnapped in broad daylight, others were kidnapped after having one too many drinks, yet one thing remains the same. Every one of these stories involves organs going missing. Moreover, 
There are many documented cases of this very thing happening in Indonesia, China, India, South Africa, Brazil, and many other countries. There are even some documented cases of this kind of thing even going on in the United States and England. This is because organs are a commodity, one that is scarce, and many people will go to whatever lengths necessary to get one sometimes, whether it be legitimately or otherwise. The call is coming from inside the house. I'm sure we all heard this one. One night, a babysitter, Carol, had received a call from her weekday employers, Mr. and Mrs. Jefferson. They called her on a Friday night to see if she could come and watch the children. She had nothing else to do for the night, so she decided to say yes, on account that she could use the money. She told her parents that she was going to go babysit for the Jeffersons, gave her dad a kiss on the cheek before he went off to work, got in the car, and then drove off. The Jeffersons were there to greet her at the front door as usual, and they gave her a quick rundown, basically telling her to just keep an eye on the children, make sure they are safe, and help herself to the fridge, and feel free to watch TV or use their computer if she needed to. Carol, the babysitter in case you forgot her name, told the Jeffersons that everything would be fine, and she'd make sure the kids would go to bed at a reasonable hour. The Jeffersons thanked her, and also reminded her that if anything were to go wrong to feel free to call them. Carol waited at the door until the Jeffersons left the driveway, and then headed back inside. She helped the kids with their homework, played with them for a bit, and then watched some TV. By the time the clock hit 8, she decided to put both the kids to bed in their room upstairs. Everything was normal up to that point. That was until she got a phone call from a restricted number. She picked up and answered, Hello? To which she got no response. But eerily enough, she could hear a faint sound as if someone were breathing on the other end. Thinking they must have butt dialed, or something to that extent, she hung up, only for her to receive another call a few minutes later. It was the same restricted number. She picked up again and answered, Hello? This time, unlike the last, she got a response. There was a man on the other end, and he asked, Is this Mrs. Jefferson? Carol responded, No, this is the babysitter. The Jeffersons are out on an errand. Is there a message you'd like me to pass on to them? There was no response. So after a while, Carol muttered, Hello? Are you alone in the house? The man on the call asked. No, why? Who's with you? Carol was left in utter confusion and a bit of fear. She asked again, I'm, I'm sorry, who is this? Can I come over? The man proceeded to ask. I'm hanging up now. Carol said as she directed her finger towards the end of the call button. Before she could, the man commented on the situation yet again. This time, in a much more sinister voice, he said, I'm one block away and I'm coming over. She hung up and called the police. Carol tried to explain to the operator what exactly was going on, but the operator assured her it was probably just a prank. She calmed down, but only slightly, and told the nice operator, thank you. Unfortunately, the moment she ended the call, she received another. Again, it was the same restricted number. Carol picked up the phone and said, Look, if you don't stop calling this number, I'm going to call the police. The man responded with one single sentence. How are the children doing? This sent a chill down Carol's back, and she ran upstairs to check on the children. They were sound asleep, until she woke them up. She told them if they could come downstairs with her, and they complied. She took out her phone, opened up the dial pad, and again called the police. They told Carol that the only thing they could do to help was track his number, but she had to call them the moment he called. It was then that she got another call. It was the same man. Carol routinely at this point picked up the phone and asked, What the hell do you want? I'm here, Carol, he said in such a calm tone. Carol had no idea what to do, but run to all the doors and make sure they were all locked. They were, and she promptly called the police. The man called again, Carol told the operator. He responded, Okay, we're tracking him now. And then there was nothing but a short silence. Ma'am, is your address 2430 Huntington Drive? Yes, that's where I'm at now. Listen to me carefully. What's going on? Carol questioned. Is there anyone else in the house? Yes, the two children, the ones I'm babysitting. Grab them and get out. Why? Ma'am, the call is coming from inside the house. 
It's at this point, the story takes on two different endings. The first being that the babysitter does make it out alive, and the second being that the babysitter and the children all die. Regardless of the babysitters and the kids' fate, there is one thing they share, the ending. After the operator tells her that the call is coming from inside the house, he quickly dispatches the police. They arrive on the scene and go inside the house, and depending on the ending, they find the corpses of the three victims, or they manage to get there on time and keep the three people in the house safe. Moreover, once the police search the house, they find the perpetrator upstairs, underneath the kid's bed. This urban legend, like the rest on this list, is true. On a side note, this urban legend is actually inspired by an event that happened in 1950. Janet Christmas, a 13-year-old babysitting for a local family, called the police screaming for help. However, because of the time, they couldn't trace her call, and when the family returned home, they found the babysitter dead. Even more frightful was the fact that the house hadn't been broken into, and nothing had been tampered with, meaning the only way the killer could have killed young Miss Christmas was if he was already inside the house. In addition, something like this actually happened not too long ago. In 2014 it'd be exact. A 16-year-old girl from Chester, England would soon find herself in a similar situation to that of the urban legend. She had been talking to an 18-year-old named Kyle Ravenscroft, who texted her that he wanted her to awaken to the sight of him hanging outside her window. When she was getting ready for bed, Ravenscroft had sent her a text that read, I'm in your house. She decided to knock out the police, believing it was a joke. However, she was too afraid of sleeping in her own room, so she decided to go to her mom's room and spend some time with her until the uneasy feeling she had went away. After a couple of minutes, when she returned to her room, she noticed a row of shoeboxes she kept beside her bed had been disturbed. She looked under her bed and found Ravenscroft underneath her bed. Luckily for her, she managed to escape unharmed, and Ravenscroft was quickly taken into custody. I suppose my motto regarding urban legends fits well here. Everything is based on a kernel of truth, and these legends point to that fact. In retrospect, making this video just leaves me with a morbid curiosity. If these legends were real, imagine what else could be. Well, that's enough of that, let me leave you with this little factoid. Did you know that one of the most recent and widely known urban legends is the Slender Man, whose popularity increased in 2012 when Slender the Eight Pages was released?